Hello and welcome back to Vampire the Masquerade Chronicles. Uh, today we are playing Chapter 2, A Ghoul with the Flower Mill. In our previous episode we went to the Botanical Garden in search of Sabbat. We found some Sabbat, we fought some Sabbat ghouls, and we got pretty badly whooped by Sabbat ghouls. Um, it is worth noting um, Going forward, anytime I have rules questions that pop up um, over the course of the game, I will put whatever I find the answer is in the description of the video that the question is in. Uh, so in the first video, there's actually quite a few rules sections there. Uh, but anyway, so... We defeated the ghouls, we found a cell phone leading to the uh, Five Roses, which I'm not sure what that is yet, so let's get right on into it. A ghoul at the flower mill. You take a couple steps towards the building to make sure you're not being seen. The recent events weigh heavily on you. You wonder if the whole ordeal at the park is any indication that Sabat is truly back and plotting something in Montreal. From an outsider's point of view, things at the Five Roses might seem quite normal. Well, excluding you trying to sneak in, that is. Things are mostly quiet, with the exception of two workers making their way in and out of the building. They're carrying boxes and placing them inside a truck while chatting merrily. In reality, you suspect the ghoul who lost his phone and notes that the park is hiding in that building somewhere. You wonder if you'll find other hints in there that can let you know more about the Sabat leader's plans. Regardless, you need to make sure the ghoul fesses up. The safety of all Montreal kindred depends on it, and so does your own. From far away, you perceive a small silhouette pacing back and forth. It's a watchman. Behind him, an emergency exit ladder. Next to you is a car. With a simple glance, you can find more than one way to get inside. You better think this over carefully, however. After all, you can't afford to screw this up. Time to find the ghoul and make him talk. Objective. Find the spot school. Read event E1. And we're going to find out if E1 is actually tied to one specific character like it was in the last one. Nope. E1, the best approach. You try to think of the best approach. It's either you try to sneak past the watchman or talk to the two workers in order to gain some more information. Hopefully convince them to let you go through. Of course, you could always just distract them and sneak in while they're not looking. Whatever helps you get to the ghoul the fastest. Um... Resume playing. So, I'm guessing action number three is the car. Uh, the two watchmen are over here. And then, or the two workers are over here. The watchman is there, and I'm guessing that's the ladder uh, that they were talking about. Let's go, let's have a look at the car. So, one two, three. Um, inventory wise, we do not have the dog whistle this time. Hopefully we don't need it. Um, I did keep the brass knuckles and the trick umbrella, as well as the old boots. So we get plus one die to our brawl rolls, plus one die to our weapon rolls, and plus one movement. And we do have the knock pick set to give to whoever the guy is if we ever run into him. Uh, so, we are going to Action 3, page 120. Car Trouble. You take cover behind a car in the parking lot. From where you are, you can see the two workers at the entrance of the Five Roses. They casually chat as they keep loading boxes from inside the place all the way to the back of the truck. You're going to have to distract them if you want to get in. You wonder what could serve as a good distraction when suddenly it hits you, the car. We can find some way to trigger the alarm in order to attract the workers in your direction, make a mental plus technology check, difficulty three, or we can walk away from the car. So we have one technology currently, and we we'll have three dice. Uh, the We Did It card that we earned after completing the last scenario will give us plus one die as well for whatever our next skill check roll was. Um, so with four dice, we could probably make it. Um, willpower does reset at the beginning of every chapter, so we are at full willpower, we are at full health, 
and we fed on the ghoul last time so we were no longer hungry. Um, there will be points when you will start hungry, and there are specific feeding events you can do prior to missions. So we'll get to those when we get to those. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead and find some way to trigger the alarm. So mental plus technology check, difficulty three. Okay, so we got four dice to use here. And that's going to get discarded because it's now been used. And I said we needed three successes, I believe. Yes, we did. And we've got one, two, three. Read event nine. Loud and clear, you've successfully triggered the car's alarm. The two workers look in the car's general direction before running over. Set your character on the designated hex. So we are over here. The workers are right there. Remove event number three or action token number three from the board. Use this opportunity to sneak past them into the building. Read event six. The workers are here. The way is clear and you could enter if you wish. Remove action two, action token two from the tile. Or remove the workers from or and remove the workers from the tile. Okay, so basically even though it weirdly has me go on the opposite side of the map from it. Um, Because there's nobody by action token two. Remove action token two and the workers from the tile. Read event ten. Inside the mill, you finally find yourself inside the flower mill. Time to find this ghoul. Remove the current tile and all tokens, then set up tile number ten. Okay. So I'm gonna pause this for just a minute here to set up the new tile, so I will be right back. All right, now we're set up. Read event 11. Hide and seek. Set the security guard NPC with security guard number 10 state card on designated hex. Move security guard every round according to this image, which I'm just going to real quick that. If you are in the security guard NPC's line of sight without stealth token, you must read security guard dialogue V1. Then resume playing. Okay, so let me also find the security guard and his card so we can get those ready. Okay, so we now have our security guard set. Uh, if you are in the security guard NPC's line of sight without stealth token, you must read security guard dialogue V1. I do find it interesting that the pathing it shows for him here. So he starts where he's at, and then he moves up to that one, over there, there, and there, and back. Isn't actually possible. Um, NPCs are not allowed to share a hex. Well, nothing is allowed to share a hex within another interaction. So he would move to an adjacent square with that investigation for token being right there. But um, anyway. So. Resume play. Well, we are going to declare stealth mode. So we've got that there. Um, basically what that means, it's not going to do anything until we actually get close enough to him. Um, once we're near him, 
within his line of sight range, uh, we would have to make a stealth roll to determine if he sees us, um, which he has line of sight two. He is a neutral character. He has two movement. Two movement? No, he has one movement. Um, come on, focus. But he does. He does have line of sight too. Um, so two hexes in front of him in a line, so like he could see. So he's looking that way right now. If this wasn't a solid line, which you can't see through. He would be able to see out to here. Um, he would get, depending on how close it is, it depend, It adds to the number of successes you need. So if it was here, we would need plus three successes. Um, so it's their, the successes you need are their line of sight, plus however many successes get added from where you're at in relation to them. So if we tried to make a stealth roll right here, we would have to get five successes. Uh, here is plus two, so it would be four successes. On the sides of him here is plus zero. And then behind him is minus one, so we would only need one success if we were behind him. So um, until we get closer to him, that's not going to be as much of an issue. But we'll get there when we get there. But you have to declare stealth mode beforehand. It doesn't come up until you pass an NPC while you're stealthed. So um, we are stealthed. So let's go ahead and investigate. So we are going to go to... Since it's right next to us, let's go... One, two... Investigation number one, page 99. A loading dock. You walk inside the room when suddenly you hear a strange noise. You gaze in its direction and slowly walk towards it. The closer you get, the more your suspicions are confirmed. There's most definitely something at the back of the room. It looks like it's hiding behind some old discard boxes and flower sacks. Make a mental plus search check. Zero to one successes, read IN2. Two plus successes, read IN1. So we do still have to roll automatically. Um, you have to roll whether or not you complete, uh, whether or not you automatically have the successes to complete a challenge. But we do have two successes, so we're automatically going to make this one way or the other. But so we didn't roll any successes, but that's okay because we still have it. So I N one loading dock. You investigate the room thoroughly and look behind a couple of discarded items and trash. You see an old box covered in dust. You open it and grimace in disgust at the sight of an abominable maimed vampire with only a stump and a head for a body. It seems to be in torpor. You immediately close the box shut. Whatever sickle is responsible for this, you don't want to know. Remove Investigation Area 1 and take the Composed Effect card. So let me grab that real quick. Okay. The Composed card. It's easier to keep calm when your blood runs this cold. Plus one die to your next mental check. Discard after use or at the end of the next chapter. So that'll probably wind up getting used really quick. Um, so, resume playing. Okay, well, we'll go one, two, three, four. I mean, right now we only get four, or we get five movements, so. Two, three, four, five. Oh, shoot, wait. Every turn, he moves. So after he did that, the security guard... So he would have gone here, since he can't land on the spot with that token. And then... On this round, after we just moved five, he would go here. I need to keep that spot marked to remember to go back to it, so I'm going to keep that marked in the book. 
So we are going here. Investigation two. Machine room front, page 103. Something in the room grabs your attention. It's a stack of boxes. You approach them to take a closer look. Make a mental plus awareness check. Zero to two successes, read in one. Three plus successes, read in two. Um, we are going to get one extra die, so it's going to give us four. We have two successes to start. After this, I need to remember to activate aspects. Um, so. But we can't do it once we're already in the investigation, so. Uh, we get the extra dice here. We have two successes. We need one more success here. We got two more successes. Okay. Read IN2. A quick glance at the boxes reveals nothing but dust and useless junk. You decide to leave without searching the place any further. Hmm. If the security guard NPC is on the tile, the noise has attracted him. Move him two hexes towards you. So, it goes one, two. If he's adjacent to you, you must read security guard dialogue D1, which he's not. Otherwise, remove investigation area token number two from the tile and resume playing. So, does he, would he then go back to his original pattern then? Or does he continue coming towards me? Because the talk of it kind of makes it seem like he keeps going, but the wording here just says move him every round according to this image. Well, where he has stopped is where he was going to end up anyway. So I guess there's that. Um, I guess he'll just continue along his route then, because... I don't have anything specifying otherwise. Um, okay. All right, so it is our turn. We've got five spaces to move. His line of sight goes out to there. So we're going to try and do this. One, two, three, four. We're going to stop because we're outside of his line of sight. And then he's going to go back on his route, which is one, two. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's going to continue on his route. Oh, wait, actually. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. 
Hang on. Because it might be tricky to try and get past him later. Let me look at his line of sight real quick again. Okay, so apparently uh, what I didn't notice was being starting an investigation takes you out of stealth. So thankfully we didn't get closer to him. Um, we are reactivating stealth. Uh, we did move there. Um, I am also going to, to make a rouse check to activate Sense the Unseen. We succeeded. Awesome. So we now add our aspect level as on max successes to awareness and insight. So that'll bring us up to three awareness and three successes for insight. Um, so what I'm going to try and do, because behind him only extends out one. So I'm going to try and stay in his blind spot to get over to four. And then when he's moved away a bit, I'm going to then attempt to re-stealth and get past him over to three. So, we are going to go... So, these two get plus zero right now. These two get minus one. These two get plus three. So right now we're just going to go one and two. We're going to stop. He's going to move. So his plus zeros are now here. His minus ones are now there. So we are going to go one two, three, he now moves over to here, which means we've got the space to get over here, and even though we're going to lose stealth, okay, so before I do that, uh, so I actually just had the video paused um, to look this up on my phone because it was kind of niggling at me. Um, when I did the second investigation, I didn't see what the result of it was, but the investigation one, which was it's saying the one that you were supposed to get if you had zero to two successes, um, was listed as having a skill check Hang on one. But so I didn't see uh, what it was, but it had a skill check as opposed to where the one that we got just said, you know, you attracted the guard's attention and you didn't find anything. Um, so I did go and look at the Vampire the Masquerade Chapters website real quick on my phone uh, in the updated errata, which the errata that is with the board game did not have this, but good to know for anybody that does it, um, the two are flipped. So if you get zero to two, you're supposed to read investigation two. If you get, or zero to, yeah, zero to two successes, you read investigation two. If you get three plus, you read investigation one. So before we do investigation four, because we did get the amount of successes we needed, we are going to look and see if we succeed at the skill check. 
Um, so, something inside one of the boxes is reflecting light. Could it be metal? You try to pull the box towards you as silently as possible, but it's stuck. Make a physical plus athletics check in difficulty three. So we get two dice and we have two dice and we have two automatic successes. So we got three successes. So read I in three. You manage to bring the box towards you without making a sound. Inside you find dismantled mission dismantled weapons except for one, a fully assembled shotgun. Serial number has been scratched out indicated it's been stolen. Next to the box is bags of flour. On the shotgun, you note traces of white powder and handprints. It seems as though the weapon has been manipulated recently. Take clue token number two. So I am glad I saw that, that it mentioned that little peculiarity. Um, cause I mean, we we did that right, so we we should have gotten it. Um, so I'm glad we did. Um, so it wouldn't have brought him towards us. Well, it wouldn't have attracted him towards us, but the amount that it had him move was going to be to where he would move in his path anyway. Um, so everything that's happened since then is still valid. It was just we got one clue token. We found out there are guns there. Um, so anyway, investigation four, machine room back, page 111. We do lose our stealth token while we do this. And if we mess this up, it might wind up getting us in trouble. Uh, there was nothing about um, this investigation token, so this should be exactly as it is. Um, machine room back. You enter the machine room cautiously. In the far left corner, you find the ghoul. Your eyes lock. He tries to run away, but you block his path. Oh. Well then, I guess we found the ghoul. Uh, set the Etienne the ghoul, number 19 NPC, on the designated hex. Remove investigation area token from the tile and read the ghoul dialogue. So let me find the standee real quick. So according to the map, he is actually supposed to be in the square that we are in, or the hex that we are in. So we're going to put him just one behind us. Remove investigation token four. And begin the dialogue with him. Page 51. Etienne the Ghoul. Facing the ghoul. Who are you? Etienne Saint, Den Saint Denis snaps. The ghoul takes a step back, his eyes on you. He seems jumpy. You assume he's suffering from vampire blood withdrawal. He probably hasn't had a fix in a while. You move closer towards him. If you have clue token number two, read D5. If you're Nico Miller, read D3. Asking what his boss is up to, read D4. Well, we have clue token number two, so we're going to read D5. Questioning time. Time to get him talking. You hope his blood, bound, his blood bond with his master is fading away. Perhaps his last blood fix was quite some time ago, considering he's most likely of most status. You show him the shotgun you found earlier. What's this for? We saw a bunch of disassembled weapons along with it. I'm not going to tell you shit, he hisses. Roughen him up a bit in order to loosen his tongue. Read D12. Try to bargain with him in order to get the information you desire. Read D10. Tell him he's already failed his mission for the spot anyway. He might as well just talk. Read D9. Um, I don't know if starting if we wind up starting combat with him, if that's going to lead to combat with the security guard. So let's try and bargain with him. Maybe we can get him as a ghoul. Uh, D10. Generous offer. Tell you what, if you tell us everything you know, we'll make sure to keep you safe. You'll be under our protection. The Sabat won't be able to get to you. The ghoul stares at you skeptically. The hell are you going to do? Nah, I want something that will actually benefit me, like for real. Don't think you're in a position to refuse to help. We already have you cornered. You might as well talk before we take back our generous offer. The ghoul's tough facade gradually fades away. I, I can't. There's nothing you can do. They'll kill me anyway. Would you rather know you're going to die or hold on to the hope that someone might be able to protect you? 
The ghoul seems to hesitate. All right, I'll tell you what I know. My boss is responsible for the kidnapping of some artsy vampire folks. Were they Toreador? Yeah, I'll know much about that, though. My job is something else entirely, then. What else is it, then? What is it, then? The ghoul looks up at you. He's growing increasingly frantic and keeps glancing at the door. You note that he's trembling. Read Deed 21. I'm supposed to smuggle and prepare weapons to fight this thing. You raise an eyebrow. What thing, you ask? I, I don't know. Please don't hit me. He anticipates your move, putting his hands up, and you roll your eyes. We won't hit you if you just talk. I know the boss wants to take down the strange creature. That's what the weapons are for. You wonder what creature the spot's after and why. It looks like they're playing something big. Is that really all you know? Yeah, it is. Right. Read D30. Assessing the ghoul. Take a step towards the ghoul and his eyes widen in panic. Uh, what are you doing, he asks. You start sniffing and notice something odd. When you look down, something on the ghoul also seems to grab your attention. Focus on the smell. Make a mental plus occult check, difficulty 2. Or focus on what cuts your eye. Make a mental plus awareness check, difficulty 2. We're going to go with the mental plus awareness check because... We're automatically going to succeed at that. We, we got three successes, so, uh, but we still have to roll one way or the other. So we have five successes. And our next check also added one die automatically. So we have six successes. And we lose our compose card because that just happens automatically. Um, so read D39. Good luck, Charm. You look down briefly and something catches your eye. It's the pendant on his neck. It seems new and reflects the surrounding light quite brightly. Where'd you get that? It's a good luck charm my wife got for me. For some reason, you doubt the sincerity of his response, but why would he lie about the provenance of a sil simple silver necklace? The wind blows strongly, causing some resonance. The ghoul immediately jumps terrified. They're here, he breathes. The Sabbat, they're here. You wait in the hope his paranoia diminishes. D31. Power of fear. They're going to... Oh, God. Etienne seems lost in his own head. Whatever he's picturing, it seems to be filling him with absolute dread. You grab and shake him. Hey. He stares straight into your eyes and pushes you with surprising strength, only to take off, dashing through the door. You chase after him. Read event E14. E14. Sweet escape. You chase after the ghoul. He makes all the way to the loading dock before you block his path. The window is open. The air is cold and chilly. The ghoul slowly backs away from you. Read Dialogue D2 for Etienne. Corner. You catch Etienne, who's now out of breath, right before he can leave the building. Instead, you corner him inside the loading dock. The night air is chilly. The window is open. Please, I've told you everything you need to know. Just let me go already. We still need more info before we can let you escape. He watches you intently. Read D6. Choices. We need to know more about what the Sabbat priest is plotting. Look, I'm just a servant, all right? I'm like walking furniture in that dude's eyes. There's not much more I can tell you. You decide to push him to reel in one last key bit of information. We can go with, what about the weapons? Do you make them here? Which is D13. Or where's this creature you mentioned, which is D14. I think the weapons are less of an issue than the creature. So we're going to go for D14. The beast in the sewers. The creature of the ghoul echoes your words? Yeah, the one the Sabbat's supposedly making these weapons for. Ghoul seems to hesitate. His eyes dart right and left, but he realizes there's nowhere he can run. He sighs. It's it's in the sewers. Your eyes widen. Why there of all places? Where in the sewers, though? You notice the ghoul is no longer listening. Instead, he seems fixated on something. You follow the direction he seems to be captivated by. He's staring at the window. We can yell at him to get him to snap out of it, which is a social plus intimidation check. Difficulty 3. Or try to get inside his mind and find out why he seems distracted, which is social plus insight, difficulty four. We, because of our aspects, we currently have three successes on insight with two dice to roll. So we're going to try for the insight check. And we got it. Read D23. Inside a ghoul's mind. The answer just hits you, clear as day. Maybe the fear of the Sabbat is the only reason this ghoul has trouble opening up. Etienne, hey. The ghoul's attention returns you. He still seems panicked, however, so you figure you don't have much time to get him to talk. 
Is there someone else you're protecting by any chance? With the way his eyes widen, you know you've hit the jackpot. He shakes his head. No, no, of course not. Sure about that? Because if you are, we can make sure this person is safe and Spot doesn't lay a finger on it. Ghoul seems to hesitate for a few seconds. Read D36. Making an oath. You wait patiently for Etienne to start talking. It's, it's my wife, Patricia. I make the ammunition in my own home and she lives with me. Spot's bound to be after me, be, bound to be after you from now on, so obviously you can't go back there. You give me the keys to your place. I promise to keep an eye on her as I investigate the place. Etienne looks up at you with hopeful eyes. Really? You would do that? Yes. He seems thinking over, then eventually looks through his pockets and takes out a set of keys. He hands them to you. Take set of keys, item card, and the Vampire's Oath effect card. Do you promise you'll look after her? I'll do my best. Okay, I'm going to pause it real quick to grab these cards. Okay, so we have the set of keys which discard after usage or at the end of the chapter, which I'm sure is going to be the next chapter. And we have the Vampire's Oath card, which is for the entire coterie. A word once given can never be taken back. Only discard when instructed. So, we got that. You decide to pry him for one last piece of information. Read D43. Where the sewers are. Listen, Etienne, if you really want me to protect your wife, you're going to have to tell me everything, like where exactly the creature is for starters. The ghoul's a little pale, but he seems calmer than earlier. Of course, he responds. Etienne searches through his pockets once more and pulls out a notepad, then takes out a pen and begins to scribble something, after which he tears off the page and hands it to you. Take the written note item card and gain one XP. I wrote down the coordinates to the sewer. There's an entrance under the Jacques Cartier Bridge. You nod and take the note. Thanks. Glance back up after pointing it away. The ghoul is staring at you with a blank expression. Read event E15. So we're going to pause it one more time to grab the note. So we've got the note, which says discard at the end of the chapter. And we gained another XP, so we've got 14. We spent nine, so we've got five available. So we're just going to sit the pencil out of the way. Uh, read event 15 now. No way out. Cold, breezy air blows through the open window. Everything is dead quiet, and the atmosphere is tense. Something's wrong with Etienne Saint Denis. Etienne? Etienne, you call out. Your eyes dart toward the exit. You assume he's going to try bypassing you any second now. His blank expression concerns you, however. He looks pale and ghastly. It's like you barely even there. He takes a couple steps backwards and towards the window. I've said too much. Before you can react, the Sabat ghoul lets himself fall into the void. As soon as the shock's worn off, you dash towards him, but it's too late. As you look through the window, your eyes glance furtively around until they finally rest upon an increasingly growing red spot on the ground. Zetian's body in what is an obviously unnatural position. A pool of blood is forming under him, staining the asphalt ground. You hear the two workers scream and see them run towards what was once Etienne St. Denis. By the time the police and the ambulance arrive, you're already long gone. End of chapter two. Read the conclusion on the back of the narrative page. You wait for the driver to show up. This place is deserted and you find yourselves alone, lost in thoughts. Your attention is briefly solicited by a noise in the dumpsters behind you. A lone rat runs off and hides behind, beneath the trash littering the place. You resume your train of thoughts while pacing back and forth by the curb. This whole affair with the spas gain increasingly worrisome. You decide not to tell Caleb of your discovery just yet, as there's still a couple things you'd like to investigate on your own first. You hear another noise and snap out of your reverie. A car slows down and comes to a halt right before you. The dri your driver has arrived. Time to think of your next step. Reward. Gain 5 XP and 3 boons. Alright. 1, 2... Three boons, five XP. It's gonna bring us up to nineteen. Which could get us a level three skill and one of our mental skills and search our awareness. Um, unfortunately, we can't afford. 
uh, because of the fact that our discipline is in, our discipline costs are increased by one. Um, we need 11 to get at level two of a discipline, and none of our attributes can be increased yet. Um, if you have the set of keys item card, you may now play chapter four, the apartment. If you have the written note item card, you may now play chapter three into the sewers. If you have both items, you may choose which chapter to play. So we did manage to get both of those items. Uh, so next time, I feel like because we're going after a beast, the end of the sewers is probably going to be a boss fight. So I think next time we are going to continue with chapter four, the apartment, which is going to throw everything through a loop. Uh, in terms of ordering for anybody that looks at this, but okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying so far. Uh, we will see you next time when we run Chapter 4, The Apartment. Thanks and have a good night.